Hey guys, welcome back to Pop Em Up Chem. In this video, we're going to start looking at gases and specifically the concept of molar volume and how moles relates to volume when we're considering gases. Let's have a look. So we're going to be first looking at Avogadro's law, which underlies this. Then we're going to look at explaining why different gases occupy the same volume. And then we're going to apply the concept of molar volume to some calculations. First, I'd like you to have a little try at this question on concentration and titrations. It's a paper one question, so try as much as you can to give it a go without using a calculator. So we've got a paper one question here. So I'm going to do the whole calculation, but also give you a tip on looking out for shortcuts we could be taking when we're doing paper one questions. Remember paper one, no calculator. So we're going to use our C equals N over V calculation. And first we're going to calculate our number of moles of barium hydroxide, which is going to give us 0 0.005 moles of barium hydroxide. Now we use the limiting reagent, multiply that by 2 over 1 from the equation. And then we're going to use that number of moles in our volume calculation to give us 0 0.05 decimeters. Now, here's the tip. Both of the concentrations of these were the same. And with the equation, it's a 2 to 1 ratio. So we would expect the volume required to neutralize it to be twice that of what was given. Fantastic. So let's start us off here with Avogadro's law. So Avogadro's law is quite simple, although sometimes it can be a little bit weird to phrase. What this states is that equal volumes of any gas, so this is any gas, at the same temperature and pressure, have the same number of molecules. Now we know from the beginning of the unit that number of molecules relates directly to moles. So what we can state instead is that at a given temperature and pressure, the volume occupied by one mole of gas is going to be the same no matter what the gas is. So regardless of the gas. And this is true for all ideal gases. Now, when we consider the structure of gases, this makes a lot more sense. We consider a solid and solids are tightly packed and the particles are close together. In a gas, we know they have these huge distances between each other and they're randomly bumping into each other. What this means is the relative distance between two gas particles in a given gas is not hugely dependent on the size of the molecule. If you look at these two little red dots here, if I draw these far apart, then in reality, the magnitude of the distance between these particles would be much larger than I've drawn here. You can see that even though the red particles are over twice the size of the small particles, the actual distance between them can be considered, to all intents and purposes, basically equal. So, this relationship between the relative distance and the size of the particles themselves, the relative distance between them being much greater than the difference between the size in particles, allows us to draw a quantitative relationship between the volume of a gas and the number of moles. The volume of a given gas in decimeters is always going to be equal to the number of moles of that gas in moles and the molar volume of that gas which we write as vm so that's moles in moles and molar volume in decimeters per mole just remember that the molar volume does change with temperature and pressure so this only works if you know the value of molar volume at a given temperature and pressure and the assumptions that we need to consider that we use when we do this are that the gas particles themselves, the individual particles, have no volume, as I previously mentioned, because their volume is so small compared to the distance between them. That's reasonable. 
and we also assume that the gas particles have no attraction to each other, no intermolecular forces. Now this assumption isn't necessarily as reasonable and we'll see where these assumptions can break down when we look at them in the next video. So that leads us on to STP and SATP, that's standard temperature and pressure and standard atmospheric temperature and pressure. Now you may see online sometimes these written as 1.01 .01 times 10 to the 5 pascals or one atmosphere. So before 1982, I think it was, that was the given for the standard, but you will be using 100,000 exactly. And you will focus mainly when you do your calculations with STP, but that is also given in the IB data booklet on table two, in case you forget, including the molar volume at that temperature and pressure too. How do we go about using this in calculations then? Well, here's a simple one. What volume of H2 gas is produced when we react 0.5 moles of lithium with excess acid at STP? So we've got 0.05 moles of lithium, and then we're still going to use our same skills from reacting masses. So we use the ratio of hydrogen to lithium, which is 1 over 2. So 1 over 2 means my number of moles of hydrogen is 0.025 moles. Then we're just going to use our equation for volume and molar volume, where molar volume at STP is going to be 22.7 decimeters. Plug in our value 0.025 and 22.7, and we get a total volume for the hydrogen produced of 0.0. 5675 decimeters. So in this example, we're going to look at how we can combine this with our understanding of limiting reagents. So it says STP, so just bear that in mind. It says we've got 30 centimeters cubed of ethane and 60 centimeters cubed of oxygen. So it doesn't give us moles here, but there are a couple of things we have to bear in mind is that as we've already said moles and volume are directly related so we don't actually need to convert out of volume we don't need to convert this into moles because the question asks us for what volume of co2 being produced anyway so because one mole of a gas has the same volume if one mole is 22.7 then 3 moles is going to be 3 times 22.7, and so on and so forth. So we can do our calculations as we'd expect to convert everything into moles. So do our volume of 0 0.03 divided by our molar volume, which STP is 22.7, and then etc, etc, carry on as we did in the previous question. However, it's given us both volumes. So we just need to do our volumes divided by our stoichiometric coefficients to find our limiting reagent, just like we do when we have moles. And it's not enough to find out which is in excess. We then also need to find out how much of the excess remains after the reaction. So all we do is use our reacting masses to find our C2H6 volume at the end of the reaction, which is going to be 60, our limiting reagent, multiplied by the mole ratio. That is going to be how much we used, so how much of this was used in the reaction. And then we're just obviously going to need to subtract that volume from the initial volume, which was 30 centimeters cubed. So we do 30, take away 17.14, which is 12.86 centimeters cubed. So that tells us how much remains of our excess after the reaction. And the last part of the question is what volume of CO2 is produced? Well, again, we're going to use our limiting reactant and we don't need to convert it directly to moles because we've got volume. So to find our CO2, we can do the limiting reactant, which is 60, our oxygen, multiplied by the mole ratio of CO2 to O2, which is 34.28 centimeters cubed. And we don't come out of using volume at any point. We don't need to use moles because we know moles and volume are directly related. Now, of course, 
if you did convert everything to moles, converted it back to volume after you've done the calculations, you would still get the correct answer. So that's not an incorrect way of doing it. It's just we don't save the time that we do when we keep it in volume and use the molar volume of a gas. So let's get you doing a question on this before I let you loose on some other questions. So in this first question, it's going to be very similar to the one I just did. You're going to find the excess, how much remains, and how much of CO2 is produced. Pause the video to give yourself a moment for that. Pop them up. So we're going to follow just what we did in the last question. First of all, determining our limiting reagent, keeping everything in volume and dividing by the stoichiometric coefficient, finding oxygen as our limiting reagent. So it asks us how much remains of the excess. So the first thing we need to do is work out how much of it was used. And then once we find out how much is used, we just subtract that from the initial, which gives us 20 centimeters cubed. And lastly, we're just going to find the volume of CO2 produced where we just use the mole ratio and multiply it by the initial volume of oxygen which gives us 150 centimeters cubed. So what I want you to do now is just try these three questions and have a go at all of them, see how far you get, and then I will go through the answers of each in turn. So pause the video to have a go at that. So going through question one then, Nice and simple, the first thing we have to do is work out our number of moles of copper oxide doing mass over molecular mass. Once we have the number of moles, we can just use our equation for the molar volume of a gas to do 0 0.0257 times 22.7, which is 2.854 decimeters cubed. For question two, we have to mix, we've got some solids and some gases here, and we're looking for the minimum mass of sodium azide. So we're gonna to have to convert out of volume in this one. And the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is calculate the number of moles of our nitrogen, which is going to equal 0 0.06 over 22.7, which is 0 0.00264 moles. Once we have our moles, we can just use our reacting masses. So we can see it's a two over three molar ratio to find our sodium azide. So we multiply that by two over three, and that is going to give us 0 0.00176 moles of NaN3. Now we wanna find the mass, simple right back at the beginning of the unit, number of moles times molecular mass, which is 0 0.00176 times 22.99 plus 14.01 times three, which gives us a total mass of 0 0.1144 grams. Okay, and last but not least, we're looking for the final volumes. So I'm gonna write down my initial volumes of methane and oxygen, giving oxygen as my limiting reagent, dividing it by the stoichiometric coefficients. And by definition, the limiting reagent will have none left at the end. So to find CO2, I'm just going to do 600 multiplied by the mole ratio, which is 300. And to find the remaining of CH4, I'm going to do 500 minus 600 times 1 over 2, which is the mole ratio between them, which gives me 200 centimeters cubed. Awesome. What next then, guys? Well, there's no practical video to accompany this video, but there are some questions on molar volume of a gas in your worksheet booklet to be getting on with. Thanks for joining me again, guys. Please like, subscribe, share the channel. And as always, practice makes slightly better.